Hi guys, well Intel's 11th gen processors have now been released and to get the most out of Rocket Lake it is necessary to grab yourself an Intel Z590 board. So today we are going to be checking out what ASRock has to offer in the Z590 Tai Chi. Now the Tai Chi as with other generations has always been there reserved for the high end and it is the company's flagship product. Now that we have full PCI Express 4 support from Rocket Lake, Tai Chi is ready for Gen 4 graphics delivery and storage support. ASRock has also supplied two super fast Thunderbolt 4 ports and the very latest Wi-Fi 6E plus a robust 14 phase design. Now this board sits alongside other models which are at the upper end of the price range for the Z590 but it isn't quite the most expensive. You guys can pick it up for around 429 in the US, 395 in the UK, and then 699 in Australia. So it isn't a cheap board by any means, and it is certainly projected to be a high-end solution for the likes of the 11900K or any other chip that you might find in the same family. Now there are a lot of boards for the Z590 chipset, you know, lots to choose from, so is it worth then putting this one on the shortlist? Let's find out. Okay, so here we have Tai Chi. Now for Z590, ASRock are using a similar theme to last season where most of the board has been covered up. In general, we have a black design for the PCB, the slots and heat sinks, but there is a lick of gold there for the typography, which is a nice touch. And for the first time, at least, that we're aware of, ASRock has given this board a mechanism that moves. Admittedly, it is a bit of a gimmick, but the concept is still pretty cool. And of course, ASRock has equipped Tai Chi to have integrated RGB lighting which is situated on the Z590 heatsink, back panel cover, and there is also a strip on the edge of the board. And that particular lighting there is achieved because there is a metal back plate on the reverse. And all of this lighting can be customized using the polychrome RGB software. Tai Chi is the standard size for a board and it conforms to the ATX form factor and that means it's going to fit inside most cases. Being a Z590 board, Tai Chi uses LGA1200, which was first introduced under the Z490 chipset. So this board can take 10th and 11th gen Intel CPUs, but to get the most out of this platform, it is advised that you go with 11th gen. Now in terms of the CPU cooler compatibility, the mounting holes around the socket are in the LGA1151 alignment. And so if you've got a cooler there for 1151, then that will fit. Just be sure to double check with the cooling manufacturer if your cooler is going to provide ample thermal performance. Now in terms of the power delivery, we have a 14 phase design and Tai Chi comes under the super alloy configuration, meaning it has what ASRock term the XXL heatsinks, premium 90 amp chokes and power stages, as well as Nichicon 12K black caps. All of this is usually found on ASRock's higher end offerings and is designed there to push the limits. Covering the VRMs, we have two heatsinks which are joined with a direct touch heat pipe. And ASRock has given one of those heatsinks active cooling for better heat dissipation. Now in our web review we encountered some pretty toasty thermal results when it came to the VRM with the temperatures that are exceeding that of 100C under extended load. And compared to other boards that is significantly greater and it does cause some concern. Behind the top heatsink we have the CPU power which is an 8 plus 8 pin socket. And in terms of the headers there are a total of 8 spread across the top, the side, bottom and centre. All of them are 4 pin and can be configured for DC or PWM and can be designated for water pumps. And for additional RGB we have four headers there at the top, side and bottom of the board with two of them being addressable. Moving on to the memory we have dual channel DDR4 support up to 128 gig and up to 5000 megahertz that is of course with an 11th gen CPU. And right next to the DDR4 section we have two USB 3.2 gen 1 headers with one of them being right angled. And we also get USB 3.2 gen 2 so you're going to be able to get plenty of USB support for your case, including Gen 2 Type-C. Moving on to the storage, we have eight SATA 3.6G ports for any SATA-based devices. And then we have three M.2 slots, with just one of them being equipped for PCI Express 4. The other two are PCI Express 3. All of those M.2 slots feature a corresponding heatsink. The only annoyance comes with the requirement for a non-standard screwdriver attachment to detach those covers. 
If we take a look at the expansion area, we have two PCI Express 4 X16s and a single PCI Express 3 X16 with an associated X1 slot. The top slot there is wide for the full 16 lanes, but if you're going to use two cards for PCI Express 4, then that mode is going to drop down to 8 for both cards. So it is best to use the top slot for a single card use. Oddly enough, this board is only compatible with AMD Crossfire. Nvidia SLI doesn't appear to be supported. Asrock has equipped these slots here to have the steel reinforcement and the extra anchor points. This provides some extra protection for the slot, which can you know, take quite a bit of abuse when using heavier cards. And down at the bottom of the board, we have the power and the reset buttons. Those are great if you've got this set up on a test bench. And there's also a small switch there, which is for clearing the CMOS values and the LED debug there for diagnostics. To the immediate left of the PCI Express, we have the audio solution, which is based around the Realtek ALC1220 codec. Now for this, we get a bunch of features, which include Wimmer caps, ESS9218 audio DAC, surge protection, separated channels, and isolated circuitry. And finally, we arrive at the rear IO panel for the connectivity. The rear IO shield is pre-attached and has some flexibility there for fitting into your case easily. So in this area, we get the BIOS flashback button, two antenna ports, for the Wi-Fi 6E, HDMI port, two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, the eight channel audio with optical out. The two type C's are USB 4 and Thunderbolt 4, capable of up to 40 gigabits a second. There are two LAN ports. One offers the 2.5 gig ethernet using the Killer E3100G, and the other is Intel based and is just the one gig ethernet using the i219 controller. We get another two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports underneath those. And then last of all, we get the two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports. And so there is plenty of ports there with the inclusion of Thunderbolt 4, which is brilliant to see. And again, just like the Z490 Tai Chi, it is quite strange and unconventional to see the audio jacks there situated in the middle as opposed to the end, right next to those audio components. As of yet, we haven't encountered any audio interference. All right, well, that is the Z590 Tai Chi. This should give you a bit of an idea as to what ASRock are kind of supplying for their you know, best option for the very latest Rocket Lake CPUs. From this board, we're getting a good blend of features you know, for this new platform. It is particularly good to see that we've got the Thunderbolt 4 on that back panel and the likes of 802.11ax, otherwise known as Wi-Fi 6E. We also get a good assortment of USB 3.2 both on that back panel and for the front panel connectivity. PCI Express 4 is there for the graphics cards. It does come in the form of two slots, but the only downside is that we get just one PCI Express 4 M.2 slot. There are a total of three M.2s on this board. Two of them are PCI Express 3, and the other is PCI Express 4. On a flagship model like this, like Tai Chi, would have liked to have seen at least two, which is what we find on some of the you know, higher end boards with a similar price tag. In terms of the overclocking ability of Tai Chi, this board does a great job. You'll know that there isn't too much headroom for the 11900K, and we found that regardless of the board or the conditions, ours won't budge past five gigahertz on all cores. We can get 5.2 to boot, but it isn't quite stable. And so Tai Chi, like others, can sustain that five gig, and it requires just 1.34 volts. If you guys are wanting to see the benchmark results with some other performance-related info, then check out that web review of of Tai Chi. The link for it is going to be on the screen and in the description. And please also let me know what you guys think of this board that we've been taking a look at today. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for your continued support guys. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.